This fleet equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit Hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, I am Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today we're talking with Dr. Peter Von Schmidt, CEO of Torque. Peter, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Hi Jason. Hey. Yeah, and congratulations. So you are the new CEO of Torque. So I'm really excited to get to talk to you because we have a lot going on in the automated truck space. Uh, so really, let's lay some groundwork here from, from your seat at the, at the top of Torque there. Where is Torque on its roadmap to bringing automated trucks to market? And, and what do you see as the biggest challenges that lay ahead? Um, Torque made uh, a ton of progress um, over, over the last years. And, and months, so I'm super excited uh, to join this um, highly highly skilled um, and, and experienced team. Um, yeah, the, speaking about progress, for us it's important uh, in, in Talks mission. Uh, you see saving lives. Um, most importantly, we will launch uh, when we think it, it's safe, mm -hmm. and, and safety will dictate our timeline here. Um, yeah. th this will be most probably we always said towards end of this decade. Um, at least towards end of the, the decade, uh, the product will be at scale. Of course, this technology will sneak in a little bit earlier, uh, but that's roughly the timeline that we can communicate. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, well, and, and speaking of that scale, I think one of the things that, that came out in your announcement that, that you were taking over as CEO was being able to bring a global mindset uh, to Torque. How does that help push the technology forward and, and what advantages does globalization provide on, on the automated uh, level? Yeah, first of all, uh, what is super important in our first launch, uh, we, we really focus just on hard to trucking, class eight, US and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, automation offers so many options, opportunities, but that also means so many distractions. And it's super important, it's a difficult problem to solve that really are laser focused on this one problem uh, to solve, untap it, and then afterwards, I think we have no limits. Uh, and that, that means globalization. Uh, Torg is part of the Daimler family. Daimler is the global leader in trucking. So once we untap it uh, in, in this really super big market, there, there are endless opportunities. You could go Canada, Australia, Europe, China with all the Daimler brands, the famous Daimler brands uh, like Mercedes-Benz or Fuso Mitsubishi or Auman in China. So. Um, there are no limits. Uh, the second big aspect is also we, we can bring together, um, combine more or less the what, what Torque is really unique at, um, this agile spirit software, uh, experts in, 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 in writing the software, but also combine it with, with, with what is also needed to bring a product to market and automotive grade, safety critical products or the automotive aspects, the tier one aspects. A lot of this know-how um, is sitting, for example, in Stuttgart. So that's why we opened uh, Talk Europe uh, to also tap into this profit pool and just combine best global talent. Right, for sure. Well, and, and you know, we did have one of my one of my editors here, at Fleet Equipment, did get the chance to ride in a Torque truck uh, earlier this year, and it was really cool to hear those stories. And to your point about focusing on Class Eight, the long haul applications where you can control, or at least you know, uh, help help minimize some of those variables compared to surface street driving and, and that that uh, from like off ramp to, to the location. So it sounds like this will just be a continued, there's no magic switch that, that you push and all of a sudden it's just all automated trucks. It sounds like it's going to roll out and use cases will grow and you'll bring more to different markets as you roll out. Is that is that relatively accurate? Yeah, you, you're, you're really spot on. So the, the first product that we are targeting is really this hub to hub driving. That means there's a logistics hub, distribution center, Close, pretty close to the highway, to the interstate. Uh, you, you run this couple of miles, uh, yeah, enter the interstate, and then hopefully just have a long trip, 400 miles, 600 miles, 800 miles, exit the ramp, reach your final destination, job completed. Right. So that's really the first product that we want to develop. Um, but it's a super cool product and it's really much needed and it really covers a lot of the use cases out there. Right, and right. Once it's solved, from there, we can step by step incre incrementally grow um, to, well, to more features. 
Right, right. So one of the questions that always comes up is, what does this mean for the drivers, right? So as, as fleet managers, uh, it's a potential uh, solution in a lot of challenges that they face, but the drivers still bring a lot of value to the uh, fleets and the operation as well. What do you see the role of drivers being uh, when, let's, you know, and, and let's say when this first comes to market, right? You are putting it into this class A long haul application. What, what do you see the role of drivers playing? Our drivers will still need be uh, will, will still be uh, be needed and in high demand, high demand. And we we also need to be really realistic what this technology can do and what it cannot do. Right. And this technology has its limitations, uh, so it will it will really sneak in. It won't come overnight. It will come gradually and then step by step um, grow in importance. Uh, we. Or my, my former company Daimler, um, our, our assessment was that in the year 2030, this might cover, let's say, 6% or of the overall freight move. So 6%, just see the growth that we have from now until then, I think could be more than 30%. Uh, so autonomous driving won't be even a solution for driver shortage. Uh, it, it's just adding much needed capacity. It could be only one means to address this. And it might help to make the job a little bit more attractive, so a little bit more regional, yeah, because it takes out this, this long stretch where you're three weeks uh, on the highway, don't see your family, can't stay with them overnight and things like that. But it's really just one lever to, to address the problem of driver shortage and add um, really much needed capacity that um, this great economy that, that desperately needs. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, that stood out when uh when we had the chance to visit with Torque earlier this year was the idea of like a control room, right? Like a remote control room too, where you could you could still interact with the trucks on the road and have kind of, you know, you think of almost like that uh, uh, that airline kind of experience where you can manage and, and like mm -hmm. fleets already have in a lot of ways on, on the yeah. telematic side, but now you get into the, some of the operation. Uh, and I love the, the, um, the comment on uh, bringing technology and maybe it changes qualifications for drivers or it changes the level of drivers that you can bring in. You know, I think we've seen, um, I think some younger drivers, at least we've seen as we've covered technology like uh, electric trucks, right? Like you had the great uh, Freightliner eCascadia unveil there at Act Expo and we got a lot of great comments from a lot of the content that we wrote. Uh, wrote and created and did video. And it's cool to see younger drivers that are really interested in that. Even when you get some of the older drivers in that, that might be a little adverse to it once they see how it improves the quality uh, of life and the job, how much they, they latch onto it and, and really are able to grow and even drive recruitment through a lot of that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you're, you're really spot on. I think it, it will make the job more interesting. It's super cool tech that you can handle. Um, it's, it's the aspect of being more at home. Or um, maybe other new jobs like like you were just mentioning the mission mission control piece and things like that. Right. And don't forget, a driver usually does much more than just driving. Yeah, this technology only replaces the driving part, yeah? and the driver does much more. It's the customer interface, yeah, um, all the trailer handling, incident handling, emergency case handling. All of this is is a typical driver job, and um, it's still needed. Right. Right. Okay. So one last question for you. Uh, new CEO coming in, you get to see all the cool stuff that you're working on behind the scenes that maybe you can't talk about yet, but, but what, are, what are you excited about? Like, what, what are you excited about as you're coming into Torque, seeing all the cool uh, technology that's going on and, and, and what this could bring to the industry? Um, yeah, the technology in itself is fascinating. You, you were mentioning, you were mentioning um, Albuquerque, and for me, it's, it's, Albuquerque is really a source of inspiration. It's still, you know, if you sit in the truck and you see just uh, entering the, the interstate, uh, six lanes, dense urban traffic, uh, doing a couple of lane changes, uh, changing the interstate, climbing up the mountain, uh, the canyon, turning around, right. diving into the valley again, some courtesy maneuver, uh, and then uh, riding by the air freight hubs, intersections, traffic lights. Oh, it's so exciting to see uh, to see the truck performing. The coolest thing is, you know, after after ten minutes or fifteen minutes, it really starts getting boring. But that's how it should be. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it should be right? excited that um, <laughs> what it, it should feel, just feel natural, boring. It just works the technology, and and then this trip is just really inspiring, especially and then 
but if you then come back and, and dive into the valley and then you see the traffic light intersection, so really complicated driver driving situation that the technology already can handle, then it gets super exciting again. Right, right, um, right. Yeah, I, I, I really love the technology. I also have some sneak previews, what is all coming here, and you see it in simulation and things like that. So, so really stay tuned. Um, and I, I hope you can have a lot of test runs with our trucks. Yeah, that sounds yeah. yeah, that sounds great because I, I know that I mean you, you know what you're really speaking about there is trust and trust in the technology and how how quickly it must build that when you when you get to experience it and it, it's all kind of um, uh, you know when it when it's in a, when it's a theory you know you kind of uh -huh. wrestle with how you feel about it but yeah why when you get in the truck and and yeah to your point it you 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 trust it you see how it behaves you relate it uh -huh. to what you expect it to do uh -huh. and you know what like you mentioned at the top of the conversation safety is paramount so as long as uh -huh. the operation is safe yeah, and you're comfortable that, that's the really tricky thing about it if you sit in a truck you think we are there or almost there right. but really making this now a, a commercial viable product yeah, that is profitable scalable last 1 million miles can handle all the edge cases, all the crazy edge cases, and you don't believe what we find in testing on public roads. Yeah, um, so this is the real challenge, and I think that's also the biggest hurdle. Yeah, if you sit in a truck, uh, you think we are there, we're not. But the good thing is we we, we know what is still missing, and we are working hard on it uh, with, with our really highly talented and motivated team. Yeah, no, very cool. Well, I can't wait to see what you all uh, bring to the market. And as, as we talk more and you bring out more uh, more cool technology solutions, we'll definitely connect again to talk about those. Peter, thanks so much for, for taking the time and congrats again on the new position. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care.